Um, listen, uh, next segment, I, I'm fascinated by this. Our next guest says the next great war will be fought in space, and a lot of people think that way. But the allies and the enemies, according to his theory, are not who you would think. Now, Dr. George Friedman, CEO of Stratfor, the global intelligence group and author of The Next 100 Years, a book out now. And George, welcome here and good morning to you. I want, I want to go a number, over a number of things that you believe, uh, well, they're contained in your book, first of all, um, under this, this heading that history you believe is not random. Now, you conclude that war in space is unavoidable because wherever humans go, war will follow. And anyone who seeks to do battle with the United States must try and take out our military satellites in order to be victorious. And when I think of the next big war, I think of the U.S. and China. You don't, however. You believe that the United States will be allied with Poland and Turkey will be allied with Japan and those will be the two opposing sides. Now, explain that. Well, long story. Uh, China is a third world country. Uh, 1.3 billion people, 1.1 billion have a standard of living on the order of Nigeria. This is an extraordinary poor country, uh, very divided financial system and chaos. Uh, it's got serious problems. Japan is already a great power. It's the second largest economy in the world, has the largest navy in uh, Asia. It, it's a serious country. Uh, Turkey, it's the 17th largest economy in the world. It's bigger than Saudi Arabia. It's got an army that can beat the Germans. It's got an army that can beat the French easily. Uh, this is a serious leading Islamic country, and when the Islamic world gets organized, Turkey's does it. So then Japan emerges as the leader in Asia, according to your theory. Right. And Turkey, much like the Ottoman Empire dominated hundreds of years ago, will reemerge. So that's how you align those two. Right. How does Poland fit into this mix? Well, the United States is resisting Russian expansion. Putin has reemerged. There's been a war in Georgia already. Uh, the Germans are totally dependent on Russia for their natural gas. The United States does not want to see Europe and Russia amalgamate. The natural country is Poland. Poland is going to be the buffer. Now, what happens when you are in a strategic relationship with the United States? Look at South Korea. Fifty years ago, if anybody had said that we'd be driving South Korean cars and watching South Korean television, they'd laugh. They were rice farmers. But when you are critical to the United States strategically, you grow dramatically, as Japan has, as West Germany has, as Israel has, as South Korea has. It's Poland's turn. So this is part of the missile defense shield that's proposed to be well, the, the reason we want Is that the relationship? We want to put it in Poland, not because it has to be in Poland, but we want to establish that we have a right to basing in Poland. Far more important than uh, ballistic missile defense are the F-16s we've fairly quietly sold to the Poles. And the Russians aren't worried about the ballistic missile defense system. They're worried about the growing American presence in Poland. So this is not about ballistic missile defense. This is about the American position in Poland and the confrontation with Russia. You know, you were asked about how you arrived at all these theories and, and how you were able to make the formation for this book. And you say it's not that difficult. Well, you believe it's not difficult if you study history because, as I mentioned before, history is not random. How does that theory fit into what you're describing here? Well, part of it is just seeing what's obvious. I mean, when you talk about Japan, you talk about the second largest economy in the world, much larger than Chinese. Uh, that's obvious. When you look at the ch what's happening in Turkey, uh, you're not talking about something that is going to happen. You're talking about something that has happened. And when you talk about the American-Russian confrontation, at least in a cool war, that's going on already right now. And if the U.S. is going to meet them, it's going to happen in Poland. So if you simply take a look at the situation as it stands right now, play it forward a little bit, mm -hmm. it makes a great deal of sense. And so that explains the geography and that how the worlds will align and, and I guess, compete later, according to your theory. But what explains the technology in space? Uh, I've been talking all week about this documentary I saw called Transcendent Man. It's the story of Ray Kurzweil. Great film. It'll be out sometime real soon. This guy's invented everything, as you know, if you've heard of him before. He right. believes in 20 years that man's going to fuse with computers and fuse with robots. That essentially makes us mortal. We can live forever, according to this theory. But the, w one of the points he makes in this documentary is that in 40 years, we have grown exponentially in our ability to develop technology. In fact, in 40 years, it's not an exaggeration to say that our ability technologically has improved 1,000 times. 
And it's that technology that builds on itself, maybe every six months, every year, every two years, that will build the technology toward outer space that will eventually lead these countries, including our own, to do battle in space. You buy it? Well, if in 1900 you would have predicted that in 1945 the main theater of battle would be the air, air campaigns with thousands of bombers, it'd be crazy. Uh, there were no aircraft in 1900. Wright Brothers are just starting it. Yeah, so you, 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 you buy the theory. I buy the theory, yeah. but I also want to say is we already fight our wars in space. When an infantry squad goes on patrol in Afghanistan, they're depending on space for their GPS system, they're depending on space for their yeah, communications, right. for their intelligence. This is not something that's going to happen. It's happened. George Friedman, thank you for your time. Come on sure. back. You're giving us something to think about, okay? Okay. We appreciate that. And check out his book, too. Thank you. All around the globe, uh, Facebook.